Um, so first of all, this, this little creature is called an axolotl. They are incredibly regenerative. They regenerate their limbs, their eyes, their jaws, uh, their ovaries, portions of the brain and heart. But there's, there's something very deep um, that, that they're trying to tell us that goes beyond repair of damage. This is a, an experiment where they took a tail uh, of, of an amphibian, they grafted it to the flank of that animal. And what happens is that over time, that tail remodels into a limb. Okay. Now take the perspective of the little, this, the, this little region right here, the cells sitting at the tip of the tail. Those cells are becoming fingers, but there's no local damage. There's nothing wrong here. So from the perspective of, the, of these cells, there is, there, is, there is no reason why anything should change, and yet they change. And they change because the larger scale system, the larger collective, transduces the fact that it senses that there's an error. Okay? At the body, at the body uh, level, this is, you, you know, a, a tail doesn't belong here a limb does, and that information is transduced down through the cellular and ultimately molecular pathways to get this to happen uh, even, though, uh, even though there's nothing uh, uh, wrong here and no individual cell knows what a finger is or how many fingers you're supposed to have, but the collective absolutely does. And so this kind of top-down control, the ability to uh, take a very abstract high-level goal state and have it percolate down to make the molecular biology dance to that particular um, uh, outcome is what we are trying to uh, manage because we would like to control uh, health and disease states that are way too complicated for us to try to micromanage. So what you're seeing here is a, a set of tools that we've developed to uh, uh, monitor the bioelectric uh, inter native bioelectric conversations uh, that cells are having with each other. Okay, the colors represent voltage states. This is not a model. These are these are real cells, and we do this imaging in vivo. Um, I'm going to show you mostly amphibian data because that's that's where the techniques work the best. But we are now everything is being moved into into mammals as we speak, and so. Um, the this this right here is an image again. This is this is a voltage map of an early uh, a frog uh, embryo that's about to put its face together. And what you will see is that long before the genes turn on to say where the eyes are going to go, where the mouth is going to go, we can already read out that subtle bioelectrical scaffold that tells this unregionalized ectoderm where the different organs are going to be. This is literally an electrical pattern memory that tells all the organs uh, where they're going to be, how many of them there are, and so on. And if we and having figured this out, we can take this bioelectrical state and we can induce it elsewhere. We don't do this with applied fields or magnets or waves. There's none of that. We are using molecular uh, uh, pharmacology and, and optogenetics and things like that to open and close specific channels. And if we do this, we can take a region of the body. So here's a tadpole. Here it's on, uh, you're looking at the side of it. Here's the eye, the mouth, the brain, the gut. We can take a region that would normally be gut. And we can say, you should be an eye. Okay? We can inject some RNA encoding specific ion channel that it, it, uh, induces this bioelectrical pattern that just says, make an eye here. Okay? Now, notice, we have no idea how to micromanage the production of an eye. It's got dozens of different cell types, tens of thousands of different genes have to come on and off. We don't know any of that. What we do know is a high-level subroutine call that the cells find compelling. Okay, and that's, that's important, uh, that they will then, having received that message, they will orchestrate all of the downstream stuff necessary to build this complex organ. Okay, so this is, and I can show you dozens of examples of this, I, I just, uh, you know, just to have a couple minutes. Um, I now want to talk about this, this cancer problem. W why, why is there ever anything but cancer? How do individual cells, which are very competent on their own, how do they get together and work on grandiose construction projects like building limbs and eyes and, and, and hearts and all of that? Well, it turns out that when individual cells connect to each other using electrical, uh, using native electrical machinery, so this is ion channels and electrical synapses, which are not just in the brain, okay? In fact, our brains evolved uh, all their cool tricks by uh, uh, adopting all of this from, from uh, the way your body was processing information long before we had brains. Uh, when cells connect electrically, the resulting network is able to store very large goal states, whereas single, single cells can store tiny little goal states like pH level, metabolic state, and things like that. Collectives can think about very large goal states such as here's what a limb looks like, here's how many fingers it's supposed to have, and, and, and so on. And so that kind of a system, uh, which operates in embryogenesis, it operates uh, during regeneration, 
it, it has a failure mode, and that failure mode is cancer. And what happens is that when individual cells disconnect electrically, they go back to their unicellular lifestyle. Their, their cognitive light cone sh shrinks from being able to uh, be part of a collective working on maintaining um, healthy organs down to a single amoeba that treats the rest of the body as external environment as far as it, it simply can't uh, uh, comprehend the, the larger goals that the collective was, was trying, to, uh, trying to implement. And so that led us to uh, non-invasive diagnostics technology where we can inject human oncogenes into these animals they will eventually make tumors, but before they do, you can already see using this voltage-sensitive fluorescent dye, here is where the cells are going to uh, uh, defect from the, from the body plan that they've been building. And by the way, all this other stuff out here, you better keep an eye on, on that as well. But better than, just keep, uh, better than just detection and monitoring, what we can do then is injecting uh, very uh, nasty oncogenes, you know, KRS, uh, all, all those kinds of things. Uh, if we, at the same time, manage the bioelectrics, Okay, so, so not uh, kill the cells with chemotherapy, not fix the genetic defect, uh, but simply force the correct electrical state where they stay connected to the rest of the network. This is what you get, and this is the same embryo. So here's the oncoprotein. It's blazingly expressed. In fact, it's all over the place, but this is where it got injected. There's no tumor. And the reason there's no tumor is because even though the, the hardware here is broken, the actual uh, functionality is not driven by the hardware state. It's driven by the bioelectric software dynamics that operate in the tissue and as long as the cells are forced to be connected and to have the right state they are not going to defect and go off and and do their own thing okay and so this is uh this is this is our now strategy so we're doing this in human um, cancer spheroids and and uh, mouse uh, mouse uh, glioblastoma and so on and the final thing i want to show you is again uh, uh just just to kind of hammer this this uh theme of being able to fix some of these things at the physiological level okay so this is the brain of a tadpole and you see forebrain midbrain hindbrain this is a tadpole that's been injected with a dominant mutation of a gene called notch very important neurogenesis gene uh, the brain the forebrain is gone the midbrain and hindbrain are just a bubble these animals are profoundly defective they have no behavior and so we created a computational model that allowed us to ask the following question if the bioelectrics is uh, wrong here what would we have to do? What channels would we have to open and close to get the bioelectric pattern that tells the brain uh, what size and shape should be? How would we fix the bioelectric pattern? The model made a prediction about a very specific ion channel. And when we open that channel using already human approved uh, uh, drugs, they happen to be anti-epileptics, uh, what you get is a, a complete repair. The brain is normal. The gene expression is normal. Their IQs are normal. They get they go back to the same learning rates as their as their wild types. And we can so so at least some genetic defects. I mean, this animal still has this incredibly powerful dominant notch mutation, and it doesn't matter. The, okay, the outcome is normal. And we can use uh, these kind of systems to, again, as predictive platforms to say what is the bioelectrical state that will get you what you want. And so this is the final thing I'll show you is our, our limb regeneration program where adult animals here do not regenerate their legs. With it, we, we have a uh, a, stimul a wearable bioreactor that delivers specific uh, kinds of uh, uh, electroceuticals, which are ion channel drugs, which are, which are there's a massive uh, toolkit available of already human approved ion channel drugs. And within uh, 45 days, you've already got a t uh, some toes and a toenail. This process then runs for a year and a half a year and a half of leg regeneration during which time we don't touch it at all. This is not about micromanaging. This is not about stem cells or scaffolds or anything like that. On the first day, in the first 24 hours, we have to communicate to the cells, go down the leg building path, not the scarring path, and then we take our hands off the wheel. And that's the last thing um, I will just say that, that um, the point here is to uh, develop tools. Of course, now we're using some AI tools as well to learn to communicate novel goals to the system to get the system to take on those uh, goal states and to then uh, reduce error between whatever's going on now and whatever the goal state is. And that's, that is our, um, that's our approach.